This is, of course, the official website for our government and the official website for Operation Warp Speed. And so I pulled the seal that they came up with for Warp Speed. Here it is right here. And I was looking at it and I go, is there some, this all just hit me this morning. And I start looking at this symbol and I'm like, at first I was like, okay, what is this? This cube is definitely very esoteric because it's Saturn symbolism. But then I began to dig deeper and searching and searching. And within about 10 or 15 minutes, God revealed the truth to me about what this symbol is. Because this is the symbol for opening your chakras. This is called the anti-karana symbol. And here you see the side by side. You can't stretch this. You can't make it up. It is the anti-karana symbol. Now, we don't believe in new age here at all. We often get accused of it. But everything we talk about debunks all this stuff and tells you not to do it, not to open your chakras, not to open your pineal gland. That's all new age stuff. But we have to break down what this symbol means in order for us to understand what is going on and what they're trying to do. And right here in his symbol is the Antikorana covered by the CV, of course. Now here's what's interesting. I had my intuition from the Most High that something could be affecting G and D E R. And look at the symbol. The male and the female are the same. They are the same symbol for the male and the female. One sex. Now let's get into what this symbol actually means. And this is stunning. Now, normally I don't like to delve into this stuff, but we need don't we need to know what everybody signed up for with Warp Speed? Now, this comes from ancient Buddhism, as well as Reiki. Anta Karana. Why more people should pay attention to this symbol. There it is. Represents a whole philosophical concept. Refers to deep levels of the mind, ego, and emotions. It's about how we can transcend them and how we can grow from a spiritual perspective. What does Antikarana mean? It means interior or within. Antar means, ooh, Kazar Antar, like the star. Means interior within and Karana means sense or organ. But the subject at hand is a different reference, the Antikrana symbol and its power. Now they talk about the similarities between the Antikrana and this. You can see on your screen. So, but then they debunk it in this particular article. M Michelle Griffith, the known clairvoyant and healer, says that this symbol has its roots in the beginning of the lost civilization of Lemuria on the Mu continent. That would make it about 100,000 years old. The story goes that humanity needed to reestablish their connection between their rational mind and higher self. At that time, the Council of Enlightened Masters, Lightworkers, created this symbol to aid humanity in its evolution. So now this becomes an evolutionary symbol. You see where all this is headed. Evolving humanity into what? Therefore, the symbol represents a collective consciousness. One mind one sex. Anyone who uses it to develop a very strong potential for recreating and stabilizing connection with the higher self. Even though its origins are unclear, the symbol appears on many Buddhist and Hindi statues or parchments. These days it's used for spiritual cleansing and meditation. We need to understand that this symbol has its own conscience Wow. It does not need a specific process of activation or a pattern for drawing it. Its simple presence 
is enough to recreate the energetic structures of a room and the person inside of it. So now, with this symbol, Trump has exposed you to some pretty evil witchcraft. I'm just being straight with you guys. Whether you like it or not. Although Anticarna is a multi-dimensional symbol in its two-dimensional representation within it, it incorporates the number seven three times. So that's seven, seven, seven. And of course, that would also be Trump's number. This number is a strong connection with the existence of the seven spiritual realms, the seven chakras, and the seven main colors of evolution. How to use the symbol. By simply placing the symbol in a room, it will have positive influence on the energy and people in that room. With its shape, Anakara Krana is able to literally cut the negative thoughts and energies that come close to it, whether it is in prayer or meditation. Maybe this is the mind control that they have over everybody. Amplifies healing energies, whether it's prayer or meditation, Reiki, or, or a simple massage session. Anta Karana will dispel any residual energies that might emerge from such therapies. If placed close to you, the Anta Karana has this, the ability to start and enhance the Taoist microcosmic orbit. This is Qigong, a method of stimulating the energy centers, energy points, organs, and meridians within the body. It is very helpful meditation for restoring the energetic balance of your whole body. The energy that's created will flow all afterward through your chakras, cleansing and activating them in the process. Two antikaranas, male and female, have the potential to effectively neutralize any type of residual or negative energy. If we place crystals, water, or jewelry between the two antikarana symbols, they will be purified within minutes. Now, there's some pictures of this crystal business. This is what's going on, you guys. Wow. So they're purifying. This is definitely not of the Most High. This is not of Jesus. So many Christians were deceived. Considering that our body has such high percentage of water, meditating on Antar Karana will bring extremely good benefits. The symbol can help us connect to our higher selves and generate inner clarity. It greatly amplifies the power of intention, affirmations, and subconscious healing. Meditating on this symbol, find a quiet place to relax, visualize yourself. So it's like basically hyp hypnosis almost. None of this has Jesus in it. Nowhere. Anywhere in this. This is new age. You might experience deep cleansing and awareness. Your immunity will be stronger. So they're relying on this for immunity instead of Jesus. And your unconscious will slowly but surely begin to cleanse each day. The sleep cycles should become deeper and more relaxed. Your mind and body will be focused and calm your energy level. So here's the female symbol. You will notice the female is slightly thinner and shorter arms. This one has an emotional healing purposes and recommended with other symbols. And then this one, I guess, has thicker arms. Let's see if we can see the difference between the two. Yeah, that has thinner arms. This has thicker arms. So this would be the male symbol. This is probably what's being depicted on the seal, on the warp speed seal, because this one has thicker arms. So that would be the male symbol. Let's read about it. Thicker and shorter arms. It is responsible for amplifying the energy fields of the chakras. There you go. Especially for Muladhara. These three, can't even pronounce them. By doing so, Yang, Anta, Karana, can boost your energy level and vitality. There's also the ability to bring balance to the yin and yang energies that are within each of one of us. Oddly enough, when placed under the bed, the symbol can help cure insomnia and generate necessary energies for a night of deep sleep. 
Both versions of the Antar Karana also have intuitive uses, meaning that we may very well find new ways to apply these amazing symbols. Here's the square. They are placed to amplify healing energies and remove the negative ones. I'm getting dizzy just looking at that thing. Place under the furniture. You can place it in a cross. There would be replacing Jesus right there. Using that cross instead of Jesus. The seven spiritual planes. This is as similar to the other versions with the only difference being the intersection of the three arms. And sacred geometry. There's Kabbalah. Remember everyone's like, hey, Trump's a Kabbalist. Well, here's your proof. Putting symbols right there in his Operation Warp Speed. Unreal. Here's the proof right here. Here's another site. Masters of the Health Network. Let's read about this. Tibetan philosophy. Spiritual anatomy, they call it. Connection between a physical brain and the higher self. It is this connection that must heal and develop if we are to grow spiritually. The Antikarana symbol represents this connection and activates it whenever you are in its presence. The science of radionics indicates that line, lines drawn on paper create a psychic effect on the space surrounding the drawing and will influence the human aura and chakras. There it is right there in black and white. Unreal. Let's keep reading this. This validates the age-old practice of yantra meditation, which makes use of visual images to purify and evolve the consciousness. Used in Tibet and China for thousands of years as a powerful symbol, and simply by having it in your presence, it will create a positive effect. We already read about that. See if there's any new information in this article. The Taoists say it, um, it creates what the Taoists call the great microcosmic orbit, wherein the psychic energies that would normally enter the crown chakra enter the feet and travel up the back of the body to the top of the head and then down the front of the feet again, thus grounding the person to earth and creating a continuous flow of energy through the chakras. So, this V is going to open your chakras. This is it, you guys. It will also neutralize negative energies. We already read about that. Wow. The symbol is multidimensional. This is probably where the warp speed comes from. Taking us to other dimensions. This is what he was talking about. The joke was on us the whole time. Multidimensional. It appears to be this, uh, from one perspective, the symbol appears to be two-dimensional, being made up of, let's zoom that in, three sevens on a flat surface. The three sevens represent the seven chakras, the seven colors and the seven tones of the musical scale though so this has something to do with sound now you know like how we talk about somatics these three sevens are mentioned in the book of revelations as the seven candlesticks well i don't buy that I think that they're trying to do a knockoff version because if they weren't they would understand that jesus is at the center of all healing they would be mentioning him but they're not the seven trumpets and the seven seals. So there's your trump linked into all this. Trumpets. From another perspective, these symbols appear as three-dimensional cube. Its energy moves up from two to three dimensions that can be seen and also continues up through unseen dimensions all the way up to the highest dimension. So warp speed isn't about going somewhere. It's about raising your consciousness to the one single consciousness that's what warp speed's really about based on the very symbolism contained within the seal they used to place it in a room lit with candles the middle of the room was a large earthenware vessel shaped in an oval 
which symbolized the cosmic egg. We were just talking about this. Cosmic egg. Remember the serpent wrapped around the egg? That was called the Orphic egg, which is very closely linked into the cosmic egg. Here it is right here, you guys. Well, here's the proof. God always comes through. The world egg, the cosmic egg, is part of the symbol of the seal of warp speed. The vessel was filled with several inches of water, and in the middle was a stool. On the seat of the stool, inlaid in silver, was the Antichron symbol. One wall was covered with copper. There you go. Everything we've been talking about. Copper. Remember? Polished to a mirror finish. Oh, this is crazy. Somebody sent me some information on copper polished into a mirror. And now it's all connecting in together. This, I believe, might be the portal. Tapestries were hung on opposite wall with displayed with a wall which displayed Reiki symbols. A Tibetan Lama meditator mediator, sorry, would sit on the stool and gaze steadily at this the image of the Reiki symbol reflected in the polished copper mirror. Was this a time machine? This Yantra meditation would create one pointedness in the mind of the med meditator, uniting the consciousness with the transcendental energies. You guys, I think we're looking at a time machine here. It's in copper color. This is everything that we've been researching. Trump the time travel. This is why he's Biff and Back to the Future. Bifrons. Janice. And his legacy will be taking all of us into warp speed. Into these this new age Reiki chakra journey. This is what they were talking about. Not a literal time machine, a spiritual one. I'm like shaking right now. This is this is just unbelievable. Tapestries were hung on opposite walls. Oh, I think we already read that part. And so this is about transcendental energies. They're trying to get all of humanity, you know, doing this. This is what they're doing. Somehow there's some component is what they're telling us with their symbolism. They would focus their energies generated and cause them to evenly flow through all the chakras and to connect with the earth. It is clear that the, 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 bah, that the Tibetans did not originate the symbol. There is no written record as to its true origin. However, through clairvoyant perception, Michelle Griffith, a talented clairvoyant healer, has been able to tune into the symbol and read its psychic history. According to Michelle, the symbol was first given to the people of earth during the... Okay. They create a symbol using a decree imbued with its own consciousness. Now anyone who uses it will have the same connection. Sounds pretty satanic to me. They created the symbol using a degree. Imbued it with its own consciousness. So basically you become possessed when you play with this symbol. It's like a Ouija board. Anyone using it will have the connection between the physical brain and the higher self strengthened. Who This higher self is not God. Okay, This is the wrong higher self. The sacred symbol has been kept a secret for thousands of years, being known and used by only a few. Now it is time for all to have access to the ancient sacred symbol of healing. A remedy to fight illness. Talk about purifying water. Meditation. Use different sizes in order to focus or widen the energies. So they can use the symbol in different sizes, of course. Which is what we covered a little bit earlier in the show. When feeling very sad, with my heart filled with unbearable pain, I place the symbols arranged as a cosmic cross on my heart chakra face down so it re realizes all of the pain. Here are different iterations of the symbol. Thin it means female, the thicker means male, as you can see. There's Buddhist and Hindu and Reiki connections to all this. Here is the Anta Karana Wikipedia article. It talks about Hindu philosophy, Sanskrit, meaning the inner cause. 
refers to the totality of two levels of mind, namely buddhi and the intellect, the higher mind, and the manas, the middle levels of the mind, which exist as or include the mental body, the link between the middle and higher mind, the reincarnating part of the mind. So it's divided up into four parts. The ego, which is self, the I, right? And the intellect, manas, which is mind, and kitta, or sitta, which is memory, dealing with remembering and forgetting. Another description says that the Antikarana refers to the entire psychological process, including mind and emotions, are composing the mind levels as described above, which are mentioned as a unit that functions with all parts working together as a whole. That's the collective consciousness. So what's in store for warp speed? Well, here is the VC distribution process. Coverage, deliver. Make this a little bit bigger. They got traceability. Confirm which of the approved VCs were administered regardless of location. Rem reminder to return for the second dose. Administer the correct second dose. You got uptake over here. How many VCs were administered per location per day to match supply with demand. And you've got control and visibility. This looks like an Ouroboros snake eating its tail. Closing the loop. So. Now. W I wanted to do this full movie decode. On the film Warp Speed from 1981. And it is from 1981. We're going to watch this entire film together. Warp Speed 1981. Now, the first thing I noticed, warp speed almost could be changed into deep draw, which sounds like something you do with like blood, right? Looks like an eyeball. The cube. Blinded. Janet, welcome aboard. How have you been? About as well as any pin cushion I know. <laughs> Paul, I've been stuck so full of electrodes and sensors and trends. What? Stuck so full of electrodes and sensors. Uh, there's a little foreshadowing there. Sister. Well, come on, come on. Let's see what kind of a job they did on you. Uh huh. Well, very nice. Glad very you like it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is there any discomfort? None. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, Anson, let's hook in the uh, transmitter cell. Hi, sir. Excuse me, Dr. Trask. Uh, this shouldn't be too uncomfortable. Go right ahead. And there you see it says trace this to me looks like a foreshadowing of contact tracing thank you ensign yes ma'am <laughs> he's young but he's the best psycho evaluator i have ever seen you couldn't have picked a better guardian angel he's cute so there's your psycho evaluation which is exactly what they're going to do with this tracing um, they're going to have people evaluating your psychological condition so that if you refuse it, you could be thrown in a loony bin. Tim. Mm -hmm. He'll watch you like a hawk. Oh, speaking of hawks, Commander Niven. Watch you like a hawk. Did you catch that? So, there you go. More contact tracing. Now, this is the guy 
I want to be very clear here that Mr. T picked to be the face of Warp Speed. And today we are going to expose his aspirations to incorporate Eastern medicine and New Age into the new technology called bioelectronics. Now many of you have not heard of bioelectronics before. We're going to cover that today. Now, what bioelectronics does is it taps into the body's electrical impulses to control health. We will expose how he's probably the one who had this Reiki chakra logo incorporated and embedded into the Warp Speed logo. As you can see here, he is the front man, the advisor for Warp Speed. And after what I show you today about what he said about Eastern medicine and incorporating it into this new technology, you will understand that we were exactly right by calling this logo out. This is the Warp Speed logo on the front of every letterhead inside every meeting that Trump ever met with to go over the Warp Speed program, his flagship initiative that he was so proud of. Of course, he saw the logo. This is a chakra symbol called the Anta Karana, which sounds a lot like Anti Crown. This guy was the head of GlaxoSmithKline for a decade. He headed up their VC department. So when you couple these two belief systems, bioelectronic technology and VCs, this gives us a clue as to where they want to take all this. Now, someone sent me Biden's coat of arms. I don't know if I have it pulled up here, but he is absolutely has the fangs of the snake in his coat of arms. This is Biden's coat of arms. And as I told you, these could be horns, yes. But horns, they could also be the fangs. Mr. T made the venom and Biden will administer the bite. Now the question becomes... If you are Mr. T and hate Google and you hate censorship or you claim to, why hire a puppet, their puppet, to begin to sneak in these technology for VCs? And not only the technology, but New Age mysticism. When you're supposed to be a God-fearing, saved Christian. It's because it's all a show. They pander. This is why I keep telling you guys, they don't care about you. They just only pretend to. Now let's get into this. I want you to listen to his own words about bioelectronics. All right, this is him right here. Now this is separate from VCs, but I believe they're going to try to merge these technologies. So what are bioelectronics medicines? What they are are nano devices. Nano devices. What has everybody been talking about? Now the, the, the fact checkers, see, they threw us a carrot. They're like, oh, we'll get the VC out. And then when everyone says it's got a nano device in it, we'll debunk them. And then no one will ever believe there'll be nano devices in it. You see how this works? He said in his own words. That you put on our neurons that can read the electrical impulses that go through the neurons. So what is the spark of life that comes from God, right? The electrical signals in your body is run by the Holy Spirit. The reason why you walk, talk and breathe is the God life. And they want to attach to that like some kind of a snake or some kind of a, 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 a vampire or some kind of a what do they, what's that word? A parasite. This is creepy. Analyze them. Decide whether they are right or wrong. Decide whether they are right or wrong. They want to map 
the entire vagus nerve pathway system. You're going to hear this in his own words. I got several videos with this guy. This is going to blow you away. This is Trump's front guy. And if they're wrong, they can write the electrical language of our biology to erase whatever was wrong and put in. So what if they decide, oh, the electrical signal for your sexual organs, oh, that's a little bit wrong. We want to add a little bit of estrogen into the men and a little bit of testosterone into the women. And now we're going to rewrite the electrical signals going down to your genitals. You see how dangerous this is? We already know what these people want to do. We already know their track record. Are we going to really put this trust in them to correct disease? What's right? So as to modify the function of a particular organ or a particular... They're going to modify the function of the organs. Particular biology. So in a disease, when the organ is a bit out of whack, out of control, then the bioelectronic medicine can correct the electrical signals that go to the organ or from the organ. So... Now, we're going to get into a little bit more specifics on this technology so you can understand how it dovetails into new VC technology that is on the horizon. They could be coming up. They could be all about this. Now, let's look into Mr. Monsef. And we're going to call him Money because, of course, you know, can't talk about all this stuff anymore. This is Operation Warp Speed, of course, here's the logo. If you're in denial that Trump had anything to do with this, now you're going to have confirmation because the very guy he hired is into this stuff. Here is Monsef Money. We're going to call him Money. Salawi. And he has a ton of money. Here's his wiki page. Now here's where we expose this guy. Because, uh, let's see. He is an alphabet Google puppet. Let me see if they let me see if they have it in his wiki article. I want to show this to you so that you can see. Um, let's see if we say Google. Okay, I think we got to go into his other profile here to expose this guy. Here it is. Now look at what he says here. A couple years ago. GlaxoSmithKline's Salawi, who now runs the VC group for GlaxoSmithKline, said had said this in an interview in the China Post. Oh, I thought, oh, wait a minute, that Mr. T hated China and it's the the China virus, right? Why is this guy heading up his 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 organization for warp speed? It says we realize that when we that when we use this chemical structure or recombinant protein as a medicine. That we use and in fact are the, um, what we use in fact are the structures of these medicines to interact with the structure of receptor or protein in the body or our bodies uses structure to communicate with biology but it also uses electrical impulses which go through our nerves so we asked the question can we use electrical impulses to modify the way that organs function now let's go back up here So, GlaxoSmithKline is teaming up with Google's life sciences venture called Verily, channeling its four-year effort to create new nanotech-based bioelectronic therapeutics into a startup called Galvani Bioelectronics with joint plans to invest $713 million into the venture over the next seven years. GlaxoSmithKline's Monsef Salawi has built this effort as a revolutionary attempt to break out of the traditional mode of therapeutics development. So this is the wave of the future. This is tantamount to mapping the human genome. This is the same thing. It's just another technology. This is Galvani Bioelectrics. This is their website. And as you can see, it's got the Ouroboros spinning in a circle. They want to map your neural pathways. And who is heading up Gal uh, Galvani? None other than Mr. Money himself. Board member and chairman 
in 2016. Is this starting to make sense now? This is when Mr. T was elected. All of this has been set in place by the deep state, which he's claimed to go after, but then hired the guy to make this happen. And it's bipartisan because Biden's doing the same thing. He's got the same guy hired on. When will we wake up? Now, this goes deeper because Mr. Money, where did he go? Here he is, was already invested in a Moderna before he ever stepped foot in the Oval Office. So, look at this. To avoid conflict of interest, Mr. Money resigned from the board of the Massachusetts-based biotech firm Moderna, which had been developing a VC for CV. So he had already had stocks. So Lowy faced criticism from Senator Elizabeth Warren. Did she run with Bernie Sanders? I'm starting to like this woman because she also spoke out against Monsanto. Remember we did a show on that? How they were, she was against big ag and then the seeds and, and the Roundup and all that? Well, here she emerges again. And it says here she, that she criticized him for continuing to have Moderna stock options worth $10 million. On May 18th, 2020, Mr. Money resigned from the board of manufacturing from Lanza which Moderna had partnered with to develop a CVVC. So he was, this guy was knee deep in Moderna stock. On May 19th, after initially denying a conflict of interest, Mr. Money divested his Moderna stock, donated the value it had gained from May 14th onward to cancer research. That's just money laundering right there. That's what that is. Because you do that and then you write that off on your taxes. You see how that works? And it all comes back to you somehow. Look at this. He had also resigned as an advisor to Bri Biosciences, a firm with sizable Chinese investments. Oh, that, that China virus. He went on and on, dividing everybody. But yet, his front man was knee deep in this stuff. It makes absolutely no sense to me. When will people wake up? Then it says uh, his decision to retain his GlaxoSmithKline stock even after being announced as Operation Warp Speed's chief advisor was cleared by the Department of Health and Human Services. Of course it was. Now, what is behind the Warp Speed logo? It masks the Health and Human Services logo. It's behind here. And it's the mask over the faces of the Health and Human Re uh, Services logo. So, he gave the appearance that he was divesting all of his conflicts of interest, but in actuality, he still made millions and millions. And the very fact that he already had the stock in the company, the very company that would win the VC race, right? It, it almost it completes a loop. It makes it appear as though they already knew who the winners were going to be. Again, dishonesty. So, it just so happens that Moderna wins the contract. Now, there's other articles in here that prove that he was the head of GlaxoSmithKline's VC division. For over a decade. I think it was like 15 years. Or even longer maybe. And of course you heard that he's into electronic implants. Now the VCs that we have now. Do not have implants. They had one that almost made it to market. Called Inovio. And it had. It used these bioelectronics. To stimulate an immune reaction. After the VC was administered. They stuck this thing on the site. It was like a little wand on the site. And to get the 
DNA to in go into the cell. But then they scrapped the DNA technology and they went with RNA. Now, let's get back to this. When did Mr. T announce the first announcement of Warp Speed? It was on April 29th. Well, I looked at that date. And that date is the 119th day of the year. And of course, we know what 119 is backwards. Emergency. Emergency. Now, two weeks after his first announcement of Warp Speed, he hired Monsef, Money Man. And he was, as I said, already knee-deep in Moderna stock upon his hire to Warp Speed. And we just explained to you how all that shook out. How he tried to give the appearance of divesting, but the cat was already out of the bag. Now, aside from this clear conflict of interest and Money Man's company winning the bid to dose millions of Americans, he also chairs on a this that bizarre company that I just mentioned called Galvani Bioelectronics. The Ouroboros. We can, we do, we drive. WWW Wow Vav 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 Six 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 Now Let's keep reading this article We're going to be very thorough here with this because there are still many, many people in denial about the true deep state and that all of these people are work for the deep state. Mr. Money has billed this effort as a revolutionary attempt to break out of the traditional mode of therapeutic development, rethinking the science, technology of drug R&D to create a completely new development field called electroceuticals, which will now be focused on inflammatory metabolic and endocrine disorders including type 2 diabetes and now Verily Life Sciences formerly Google Life Sciences which operates under the new alphabet banner is making a big biotech bet so this is all about Google that it can live up to its mission to transform medicine by partnering with GlaxoSmithKline So, this is an ambitious collaboration allowing GSK and Verily to combine forces and have a huge impact on an emerging field, said Verily Chief Technology Officer. Now, we're going to get into more of the New Age aspects of this later in the show. I have a video, an hour-long video, him talking himself with timestamps. We're going to break it down. And he's asked a direct question by the audience how Eastern Medi Medicine will fit into all this. And he acknowledges it and says the day before he met with a guru. In case you're still on the fence. Can't even believe I have to do these kind of videos. <sighs> they want to harness new life science tech. In search of multitude of new ways to improve human health. And rev up a longer life without many afflictions that drag people down the longer they live. This is trying to preserve your life and losing it. This is what this is. So I'm going to pin I'm gonna pin all of these links. I don't want to get too weighed down in some of these articles. Here is... One article on electroceuticals. Look at this. <laughs> Some of you with eyes to see and ears to hear are already hearing the word DARPA. And you're going to hear him say that in his own words. That they are interested in this. Super soldiers. 
but I got to lay the groundwork first and show you what this is all about. A jump start for electroceuticals. They were already talking about this in 2013. Imagine a day when electrical impulses are a mainstay of medical treatment. Your cl clinician will administer electroceuticals that target individual nerve fibers. Now make no mistake, this involves nanotechnology and implantable technology. This will be the very beginnings of implanted microchips. You're going to hear that in his own words too. These treatments will modulate the neural impulses controlling the body, repair loss function, and restore health. So faster healing. This is DARPA. Electrical prescriptions. Electrics. You're going to hear that. You're going to hear him mention that. This is all about healing, faster healing, super soldier healing. You know how we see in the um, in the movies where someone gets shot and they heal very quickly? Well, this is the kind of stuff that DARPA is interested in right off of their website. Unbelievable. Let's keep going with this. You guys are probably chomping at the bit. Let's get into this video, Casey. Okay, we're getting there. So, there's chatter of using bioelectronics to administer VCs, either in the form of implantables or enhancing the immune response when the shot is given. There's a study here. Here is new infection. And they talk about using bioelectricity to fight dangerous infections. This was dated 2017. And down here, they talk about VC strategies. All vertebrates from fish to people have two kinds of immunity with common features. The adaptive immune system relies on the memory of previous exposure to specific pathogen and is the basis for current VC strategies. The innate immune system is pr present from the time an egg is fertilized, it provides a first line of defense against pathogens through surface barriers, antimicrobial amino acids called peptides. So they're talking about using this bioelectricity along with VCs. This company has the patent on using neural modulation as a VC adjuvant. In other words, just what we were talking about, stimulating the immune system, a method for enhancing immune response in vertebrate subject is described. The method includes providing at least one energy stimulus configured to modulate one or more nervous system components of the vertebrate subject and administering one or more immunogen to the vertebrate subject wherein the at least one energy stimulus and the one or more immunogen are provided in combination and in a temporal sequence sufficient to enhance an immune response so you know that i'm not making all this up now we already talked about anovio and them using this very technology to enhance the immune response that was for a DNA VC in which it did go into the cell but they scrapped that I think we shed too much light on it and then they defaulted to mRNA which is does not go into the cell so we're told now they've been working on what is called electroporation and it aids in the transfer of DNA into the cells. They've been working on this since 2008. This is a 2008 study, United States Securities and Exchange Commission. And in this document, let's see what's the title. Oh, this is the Inovio document. So this is the SEC filing. And lo and behold, 
they talk about this, the availability of funding to support continued research and studies in an effort to prove safety and efficacy of electroporation technology as a delivery mechanism or develop viable uh, DNA VCs, the availability of potential availability of alternative therapies or treatments for the conditions targeted. So there it is right there. Now, fortunately, this tech has not made it to market yet. But here we are with Biden and the very same front man leading out in his VC aspirations. But this guy being a leader in this field is very worrisome to me. And this brings us full circle back to the famed Warp Speed logo. The Antar Karana. Some people are calling it the Antichrist. The Reiki Buddhist Hindu symbol that opens the chakras. Trump picked this guy to open your chakras. And he almost certainly incorporated the logo on purpose. Because this symbol, the Antikarana, is all about the electrical phenomenon in your body. This is it. Can't make it up. The Antarctica is an electrical phenomenon. Is this sinking in yet? I really hope it is. I really hope it is. The Antarctica, this is what the symbol's called that I just showed you, is an electrical phenomenon in your body. Electronic current through neurons. They call it opening your nervous system. So you have to ask yourself, where are we headed with these implants? Where's all this headed? Now, I might not be around in the next five or ten years when all this hits and people will have long forgotten this video. But I, 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 I know for a fact that this is where they're taking things. Let's read a little bit of this, and then we'll finally get into the video I wanted to show you. It says, in order to discuss the Antikorana as an electrical phenomenon, the first and most obvious question to address is, what is electricity? What is the attractive force between a positively charged object and a negatively charged one? Now, what you're going to hear him say is that they basically use... Um, these electrical signals to take the charge away. They'll either charge it positively or negatively. This dovetails right into the Antikorana. Right into it. It's exactly what it is. What is the attractive force between a proton and an electron in the heart of an atom? Science knows how electric charge works and behaves well enough, but seems at a loss for actually describing or understanding what is its essence. But then again, science isn't equipped to penetrate this core mystery because electricity is quite literally alive. It's a living entity, something that would probably come as a surprise, even a, even a shock to your local electrician. In esoteric literature, the great electrical life is referred to as Fohat. And to paraphrase Helena Blavatsky, do you see how you can't be a Christian? And allow this. He is personified electrical vital power. The transcendental binding unity of all cosmic energies. On the unseen. As on the manifested planes. On the cosmic level. His influence is felt in the constructive power. That carries out the plan. In the mind of nature. In the formation of things. From the planetary system down to the glow worm. In simple daisy. On the earthly plane. So blah, blah, blah. This goes on and on and on. Now you know what the symbol Antikorana means and what it is. It dovetails right into what we're about to see next. Now, as we close the show, and I may do a little question and answer. This is it right here. No delusions about it. And you're going to hear his own word and his own words here. 
he actually describes and this this is the the uh, moderator here let's make this a little bit bigger you guys can see this this is the moderator and you're going to hear him in his own words say that modern medicine are poisons this is monsef right here let's go to 10 minutes 23 seconds and hear the moderator say that modern medicine are poisons his big idea is going to change the world let me slow this down. I have it on fast speed. That's I any research that I do, I usually have it on fast speed so I can get through more material and bring you guys more information. Before going on to Monsef, I just want to say that just get to remind those of you who aren't scientists, most of the drugs that we have now are poisons. They work by blocking a receptor, by blocking a channel. Look at this guy. The way he looks at him. Whoa, he goes, You let the cat out of the bag. They're poisons? by stopping something that normally happens from happening. This is different. This is making it. Now this conference in Aspen is all about bio e uh, electronics. This is what this is all about. And this is where money man lets the cat out of the bag. Now at 14 minutes, he talks about implantable microchips and nanochips. This is him right here. Complex peripheral nerves are stemming from uh, the brain through various uh, proceeds and go, for instance, through the vagus nerve that you have. So this is all about the vagus nerve, and this is where this parasympathetic, uh, the most electrical signals go through, and this is what they're really focused on in tapping in to that vagus nerve. That's This is where the center of this technology is. They want to map the vagus nerve in your body to find out exactly where it goes and how to interface with it like a parasite. You have described and then branch into organs more and more specifically. And our concept is to uh, understand, read the electrical language that nerves, just as they come to the spleen or to the uh, muscle of uh, controlling our lungs or into the pancreas or into our GI tract, get to that nerve, read what they're telling our organ. And if we read that something is wrong, correct it and do that through microchips or nanochips that microchips or nanochips here all this is headed we would implant on that nerve have them very local so they need to be very close to the organ and very specific by definition because they're very local but also because they only correct when they read something is wrong they would be temporarily specific and now if you think this is all great later in this broadcast they talk about DARPA's interest in all of this. Let's go to 16 minutes because here he says they all got together and shared all their tech and that this will be a reality in five years. Now this broadcast five years ago. So here we are. And now he's just magically heading up this federally sponsored VC development in America under warp speed in making this bio, uh, bioelectronic medicine. So we decided to actually foster the scientific field, become the integrator, create an open innovation approach. We created a prize. We put uh, hundreds of scientists from all continents together in a meeting. Francis, uh, you were there and you were there too, Kevin. And so it's just a, everybody got together, almost like, you know, how they got together with, with CERN, same thing. And, and really try to advance this field. We, uh, we um, have opened this completely, so intellectual property, etc., is the property of, uh, of the world and of the scientific field. And enormous progress has been made over the past year and a half since, uh, since we, have, we had that meeting. I can tell you that today uh, in Glaxo... Now, let's skip up to number 18, because here's where things go off the rails. 18 minutes. The guy starts coughing, almost like they're laughing about this. And listen to what they say. And I want you to watch Monsef's eyes as the guy starts coughing. Inside our body moves all the time. So when you connect something metallic or hard to a nerve and the nerve moves, you run the risk of potentially. He's talking about the interface. How are they going to interface the nerves? They still haven't figured out technology to do that. Uh, harming that nerve. How are we going to? make these connections last for decades and years uh, again fascinating technology is being advanced those are three of the, the critical challenges these technologies but as i said we're very optimistic that we work great thanks 
Well, it's great to be here in Aspen and a privilege to be on the panel uh, with Munson <coughs> and Kevin and, and to have wow. John, who seem privileged to be on the panel. Look at this. Uh, with Munson <coughs> and Kevin and, and to have John, who seems to be afflicted by something that's, as our capable not. moderators. <laughs> it's hyperreactive airway syndrome. I think you all know it. The bugs are dead. It's just an allergic reaction to their carcasses. Okay. Active airway syndrome, I think you all know it. What? The bugs are dead. It's just an allergic reaction to their carcass. <laughs> Hyperreactive airway syndrome, I think you all know it. The bugs are dead. It's just an allergic reaction. Kevin and in Aspen. Now we're going to zoom in on Monsef right as the guy coughs. Look at this. I'm going to put it in slow. Actually, I can't. Let's watch. And a privilege to be on the panel uh, with Monsef <laughs> and Kevin and, and to have John who seems to be afflicted by something. It's either a it's a joke. And Kevin and, and to have. John, who seems to be afflicted by something that's as our capable not. moderators. <laughs> it's hyperreactive airway syndrome. I think you all know it. The bugs are dead. It's just an allergic reaction to their carcasses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with the appropriate bioelectronic medicine, you can probably control that. See the subliminal there? With appropriate bioelectronic uh, medicine, we could control that. This was a clue about what they knew they were going to do with CV. 19. This was five years before it happened. Now, whew, man, this is heavy stuff. I'm going to go back here and make sure you guys are still, we're still okay before we continue on with this show. Let's get that creepy uh, feeling that I'm talking to myself. Everybody thumbs up this video. There's way too many people watching that haven't thumbs up this video. And then I'll be back in the chat in a minute to finish this off. We just haven't by the, by the end of this, people may want to just be zapping me. No, 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 no. This time I will cover this. Unbelievable. Now, at 20 minutes into this, Monsef starts talking about the vagus nerve. And actually, Monsef doesn't. This guy does. And he ta starts talking about how he feels like a magician when he Spock chokes his patients out of their tachycardia <laughs> this is crazy listen to this ain't lightheaded and has dramatic moments you have as a doc working in the emergency room which i used to do a lot of is when somebody rolls in the emergency room door who is faint lightheaded and has a very rapid pulse and it turns out they have something called paroxysmal atrial tachycardia a rapid form of heartbeat that's not terribly dangerous. It's not like VTAC, but it is very uncomfortable if you're in the middle of it. And it is possible, if all goes well for you, that you have that person simply lie down on the gurney and reach in and press with just the right amount of pressure right here on the carotid artery. And within a minute, you can break that tachycardia and that person. So like he Spock chokes his patients out of their tachycardia person is back to a normal rhythm and you feel like a magician how does that work back to a normal rhythm and you feel like a magician oh kind of like janice and john Brees in the pharaoh's court see how this works these people are demigods now at 22 minutes they let the cat out of the bag because they talk about immunity he lets the immunity word slip Another clue that they're going to incorporate this into VC technology one day. Comes to what we're talking about today because it carries a lot of this parasympathetic kind of signal, the kind of thing that maybe is involved in, 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 in the immune system, is involved in gastric contractility, is involved in blood pressure and so on. The vagus, vagus for wandering, by the way, because it wanders all over the place after it leaves the brainstem. It's got all these branches. Go to Wikipedia and look it up. All the diagrams look like they were drawn in 1920. They were. Because they were. Yeah. And we haven't gotten past that. We can sort of maybe say what the path of the various branches is. And it's pretty clear that they're not quite all the same in everybody. So we have a personalized medicine issue here as well. Just got to say that. But what we really need, if we're going to try to understand how to intervene, is a much more sophisticated way to measure what's going on there. And that means getting the anatomy squared away, the neuroanatomy. And that is, in fact, going to require a lot of technology that we are starting to invent, but we have work to do. That vagus nerve is not a nerve. 
It's actually within it hundreds of thousands of individual nerves that are going to different places, some of them sending signals, some of them receiving signals. If you really wanted to understand the system, what you'd like to have is a technology, this is our dream, that you would wrap around that nerve that would actually sample everything that's going on there without interfering, that would both be able to read what's happening and also send messages to change what's happening. And do that for the individual because there are gonna be differences you might wanna to have to tune. That's gonna take uh, an incredible advance in nanotechnology to be able to do that. But there are engineers and neuroscientists that are champing at the bit to get there. So I give Kevin and Monsef a lot of credit for getting the idea of this bioelectronic medicines initiative together. And Monsef putting resources uh, from a private company into this effort and then insisting that everything has to be open access. Uh, that doesn't happen all the time and I think should be very much applauded. And we did, in fact, at that meeting a year and a half ago, conclude that it's time to really make a push here. And this is a place where NIH can make a contribution. We have something called the Common Fund, which is a part of our budget, which is intended to tackle projects that no single part of our institution could handle, but it might benefit across the board quite widely, and this seemed like a great example of that. So we have initiated a program called SPARC. It's not the greatest acronym, S-P-A. Yeah, let's stop with that right now. So, <laughs> I got to say, our colleagues in DARPA are also engaged in this, the Department of Defense. They're very interested in what? the same people that brought you the internet also engaged in this. For that right now. So, I got to say, our colleagues in DARPA are also engaged in this, the Department of Defense. They're very interested in the same people that brought you the internet and, you know, things like GPS uh, have also glommed onto this. They have a better acronym. Theirs is called ELECTRIX, E-L-E-C-T-R-X. Get it? That's the one we just showed you about rapid healing using these implantables, and DARPA's already working on it. Wish I'd thought of that one first. <laughs> but what are we doing with Spark? That's well, we have actually dedicated, over the next seven years, $248 million, and the first notice of opportunity for applications went out. Uh, they were due in April. They're getting reviewed next month, and we will make awards in September of the first set of these, particularly focused on defining the microanatomy of the peripheral nervous system. So we have a full census of what's there, some idea of what it does at a much more detailed nature than what we can read about in, from the 1920s, and we're still kind of stuck with that. So where will this go? I don't know what the timetable will be, but I do think um, everybody else on this panel is right. We're gonna end up with interventions for obesity, for diabetes, uh, for lung disease, Certainly for the immune system. Immune system, right there. For diabetes, uh, for lung disease. Certainly for the immune system, uh, for bladder problems, for pain, and for hypertension and cardiac issues, and probably some others that people here on this panel could mention. Now, they mention in here, too, that this is tantamount to the next human genome mapping project but instead they're mapping the vagus nerve pathways and they're mapping how they can interface with the vagus nerve and where they can interface with the vagus nerve also they're talking about mapping the frequencies and impulses the frequencies and impulses these will be they will use implantable technology to do this this is it, you guys. And this, in case you were late to joining the show here, this man is and was hired by Trump, Mr. T, to head up Warp Speed and now is carried over into the Biden administration. And my guess is that this will become our reality. It's figuring out where the crossing lights are, where the flashing lights are, mm -hmm. how do you get off a highway, um, how, do, how do nerves communicate with each other, um, how do they handshake, what's the electrical way that they handshake, what are the other ways that they can handshake. I want to go much farther without sort of mentioning, it's not just that this is a pipe dream, there are some specific examples of people who have been helped, maybe the, the person who had rheumatoid arthritis in Europe. 2011, and uh, I flew to meet him over Thanksgiving. Or if within two weeks of implanting so they talk about some case studies which sound like miracles 
basically what they want to do is enter the holy place. They want to enter the temple. The abomination that will cause desolation. Desolation of your soul. Because the two cannot exist is in one. Your lamp is either full of light, as Christ said, or it is full of darkness. The eye is the lamp of the body. This is what Jesus said in his own words. You can't have both. Uh, of what we understand about the body in lots of other ways. About the brain, we have a big initiative about the central nervous system, which is not our topic this morning, which is at least as bold, trying to figure out how those 86 billion neurons in here do what they do and what we could do to intervene when they're not performing in the way you want them. And it's a little amuse-bouche for precision medicine when you came to CBS a couple of months ago and we were talking about, you've got this human genome pro uh, project, we know what people's genomes are, now you've got to match it up to phenotype, you know, so what's going on in their lives? And these gizmos and maybe this technology can help us have databases, that, I know that's a scary word, databases of health, uh, which brings, that, which help us put it all together and figure out, you know, what's going to happen to who, what should we do when. But of course, I would be remiss uh, if I didn't bring up the topic that I'm sure all of you are thinking right now, which is, you've got these, you're hearing about chips implanted in bodies, so I've got to ask you, Kevin, and then we'll flip it to the audience, any possibility of people hacking? Into, into other people's <laughs> neurological systems and causing mischief. Not that anybody has that type of mentality in our planet. So, so once they have access to your neural system, they can control you. This is the whole joke about super soldiers and DARPA. Devices can be hacked. And that is one of the challenges that Monsef and I have talked about. And Francis, this, this, is, this is an opportunity to think about if, these, if, if we were to roll some of these out today, going to the doctor will become a thing of the past. Your, your chip will talk to your watch, your watch will talk to the internet, the internet will talk to your doctor, your doctor will make adjustments. But Kevin, that's happening. you know what they can't do? Your watch can't do this. So this is the story of the year. This is what we need to warn against. Uh, of course, quantum and all that dovetails into this. I'm interested to hear uh, channels like Anthony Patch and what his take on how the quantum will dovetail into this. But this is where they want to take us. You have a watch and a chip. You don't have to go to the doctor. And they just modulate and regulate the frequencies in your body. They tap right into your vagus nerve, which is the neck nerve. Right? Remember we talked about the fangs of the serpent in piercing you in the neck like a vampire? This will be it. Instead, the device that are going to wrap around your nerve is going to be the fangs of the vampire. And they will control you. I'm not trying to push out of work. <laughs> and its neck that stand up. And even though intuition is a horrible word in these day, this day of precision medicine, I am quite certain it will never be replaced by machines. But I love machines. I'm a computer nerd and all that. But I can't let that go by. Go ahead. That, I think the question on the table when you think of it in that way is, do we need a new internet? The internet as designed by DARPA is, is a completely open network. Yeah. And I think the discussion the internet, the internet as designed by DARPA is, is a completely open network. Yeah. And I think the discussion that's happening, not just in the guise of medical devices that can be hacked, but in other technologies that people know a lot more about than I do, but should we be building a completely secure yeah. internet from the ground up? What's going to happen when they rebuild the internet from the ground up? Well, of course, there'll be new rules. And there will be things you can't say. They'll have complete and total control under the guise of internet safety and security, right? The Bible says when they say peace and security, then the world will end. Well, maybe part of that is talking about a secure internet rebuilt from the ground up. And he mentions DARPA again. And this is where the truth emerges. At the end of this, when you hear the final question, the guy asks, Montsef himself stands up to answer the question as this guy asks about Eastern medicine. Let me find it. Hello, <laughs> Don. Why it works. So now I'm trying to you specialized medicine. Sequence or and of actually it's these chips oh here it is listen to this watches guy watches and chips but going to the past into eastern medicine 
do you guys take lessons from acupuncturists and millennia of insights on nerves and all these crossings of where to focus, you know, research on where to put these chips? Now, what he just asked was Eastern medicine. And this fits in directly to what is going to happen. Listen. So, yes. Uh, it's fascinating to, to see uh, how potentially epicompter has mapped points of, uh, of action that may be relating to exactly the nerve signals we're impacting. Now, he addresses acupuncture specifically, okay? But he goes on, takes a step further to talk about Eastern med medicine in general. And just to bring it to today's age, I just, uh, I will not cite who, but just yesterday, I was spending time with, with a major meditation uh, guru and uh, with a major meditation uh, guru and uh, with a major meditation uh, guru. And okay, a meditation guru. So he's consulting with a meditation guru. This is five years before he came on with Warp Speed. And now you know where the Antikorana symbol in the Warp Speed logo probably came from. He probably incorporated that into the symbol. Okay, it's becoming very clear and apparent at this point. Let's listen to what else he has to say. And uh, who has a whole set of hypotheses of the impact of meditation and your breathing, rhythm, etc., on the vagus nerve and entering into mm -hmm. metabolomics and RNA sequence. Uh, and there he just said right there, RNA sequence, that's RM, RNA, BC, right? Unbelievable. And entering into mm -hmm. metabolomics and RNA sequence uh, analysis, etc., to uh, document in a more scientific way the impact of, of meditation on how it impacts your health. So. I do think this is an area where very old medicine and ultra new specialized medicine uh, may meet somewhere. It could really get. So there you go. In case you needed to hear it in his own words. If you're a Christian president and you have your Christian team around you, your consultants, and they're about to make a medicine that's going to basically the entire United States, millions and millions of people are going to take. Shouldn't those people have been told about this at the least? Instead of trying to sneak it past them? Give it a jump start. All these thousands of years of observation, you'd yeah. be foolish to ignore yeah, it. Absolutely. And NIH has a whole You'd be foolish to ignore it, he says. Section a uh, whole center. Yes, I'm into new age. Who said that? Remember those words? called the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health that has been doing these kinds of rigorous analyses of acupuncture, of other kinds of interventions, and particularly focused now on meditation and its benefits, which you can clearly show are there, but we don't understand. Where is God in all this? Where is faith? Where is Jesus Christ nowhere to be seen? This is Olaf the Black. And he was one of three kings of the Isle of Man. Now this is the shield of the Isle of Man, the coat of arms. And we've all seen this symbol before, have we not? Because this symbol is on the modern day Warp Speed logo. Who is Olaf the Black? Well, as I opened the show, I said he is the king or one of the kings of the Isle of Man. He's also father to the McLeod clan. These are the earliest ancestors of Mr. T. We're going to call him the Trumpman Show, the Troopman Show. Now, let's first talk about the symbol. And then we're going to speculate on why the symbol was used in the Warp Speed logo seal. We're also going to talk about what this means or what this could mean about the VC that already 20 million people have taken. So let's get into this Wikipedia page here and trace back the lineage of Olaf and the McLeods and Don's mother. Now, Olaf was in control of the island of Lewis slash Harris. Now, 
for you to wrap your brain around this, this is the map here. This is the outer Hebrides or Hebrides of Scotland. And the Isle of Lewis and Harris are the same island. It's just they're named separately. So you have Lewis and Harris in the southern portion, Lewis in the northern portion. Now, Trumpman's mother was born right here in the Isle of Lewis in a little fishing village called Tong. Now, here is what gets creepy because Olaf was in control of this. And I'm going to link the Wikipedia articles. They're super long, so I don't want to spend all of our time going through the article. Just know that what I'm saying, I'm quoting from these Wikipedia articles, which each have a footnote where you can look at the original source. Okay, so you know we're not making any of this up. And so that's what we're going to do for the sake of time and brevity. Now, according to ancient documents, the original name of the Isle of Lewis was called Lotus. Lewis Lotus. Like the lotus flower. Now, who do we know is the lotus flower? That would be Kamala. Kamala means lotus. So here you have an island that just so happens to be the island of the maternal roots and ancestry of the Don, Mr. T himself. And you have an island with Lotus and Harris on the same island. That's Kamala Harris. It's named after the successors of the Truman Show. This is crazy. How can this be? Now, there are also connections to Joe Bitten's family lineage that cross link directly to this history in this very place on the planet. Of all the places on the planet. The King of Scotland. Actually, several kings of Scotland had as their chancellor the heir or the descendant of Joe Bitten himself. They interacted right in this area at the same time frame in history. You can't make this up. It's as if history is repeating itself. Now we'll get into the dynamic of how that happened a little bit later in the show. But the story went, according to ancient records, that Olaf wanted more land. But he was rejected. He was thrown in jail by the very king under which Joe Bitten's ancestor served as chancellor, William the Lion. What are the odds of this? Is this whole double impeachment thing? Is this like history repeating itself? People are saying that Trumpman might go to jail. Now, Olaf was ruthless. What he did to his enemies, and in fact, what he did to his own uh, family members, was he would blind them. He would poke out their eyes and emasculate them so that they couldn't bear more children, and he would prevent retaliation and revenge. So he basically tortured them. And his biggest opponent that he fought against was his own half-brother, Roggenwalder. And he defeated him finally and killed him, his own half-brother, on St. Valentine's Day, February 14th. Now, there is much more to this Olaf the Black. But let's focus on the symbol of the three legs. Again, this is the Isle of Man symbol, which was also adopted by the McLeod in their coat of arms, as you can see right here. Now, there is some dispute as to whether or not Olaf the Black fathered McLeod. But as you can see here, they've adopted the very same symbol, the three-legged man 
Now let's keep going with this. Because the symbol is called the three legs of man. According to this source here. The three legs of man. And it's been associated with the triketra. As well as the triskels. And the triskelion. As well as sun worship. And there's a motto that appears in some of these depictions of the three legs of man. Here's the motto here. And what this translates to is, however you throw it, it will stand. Remember that game we'd play as children called jacks? And you'd throw the jack and it would stand up no matter how you threw it. Well, this is the concept behind this symbol and the motto. Now, here's where things get really creepy. Because this also connects back to ancient Sicilian black nobility. Here it is right here. The symbol appears on this drachma coin from Sicily, dating all the way back to the 200s BC. This was around the time of Christ, just before Christ was born. The three human legs with winged feet. Wow. So, what is all this fuss over the three-legged man? Or the three legs of man? This It appears on the Warp Speed logo. And the symbol means something else very cryptic. It is also known as the Antar Karana. Which is a Reiki symbol. Let's put these all side by side so you guys can see what's exactly what's going on here. Now, some people are saying, well, it's not exactly, well, it's exactly that. It's very close. This is what they were getting at here with this. It's just been sent down through the millennia. But there's something very evil about this symbol. What is the Antar Karana? This is it right here. And this symbol is a Reiki symbol placed around living spaces. And it's been known to emit energies into the room as you look at it. And it's supposed to open chakras. Now, we already found that this symbol is linked to the Truman Show's or speed advisor pick Monsef Salauzi, we're going to call him because he was into Eastern medicine and New Age and bioelectronics and tapping into your vagus nerve. Okay, and so he we we postulated that he may have been the one to hide this logo into the warp speed logo, and we're going to cover this. So I don't want you guys staring at that. Or well, you're staring at it here anyway. But we we postulated that Salauzi was the source of who put this in here. But then we also know that nothing passes by Truman Show's desk without being looked at. Especially his signature achievement. His signature accomplishment. Of course he saw this logo. But now we are also seeing a connection to Truman Show's direct descendants. Possibly going all the way back to black nobility. Now we did a whole show on all this. So I'm not going to get into detail. But this symbol is loaded with ancient eastern medicine. Buddhism. Hinduism. Raising of chakras. Opening energy portals. 
and none of it mentions Jesus Christ. And all of this is coming from a quote unquote Christian president who all the churches got behind and now are convincing the people that come to their churches to take the VC in honor of Trump's efforts. False prophets, get behind me, Satan. So, as we begin to wrap up the show, we're going to talk about the implications of this symbol as it relates to the VCs. What are the possibilities of what could be happening here? We're going to pontificate about that. Now, let's blow this up because there's even more. Five and eight stars. Remember all the fives and eights, 58s, over and over and over and over again. 58 rooms at the Mar-a-Lago Mansion. 58 stories at Truman Tower. We were re literally watching the Truman Show play out in front of our eyes. Five and eight. And we also discovered that this symbol was masking the health and human services symbol, which is behind here. It was masking it. That's all of us being masked behind the lie. And there's so much more about this symbol that basically exposes what's happening. Now, why are we still talking about it, about this as it relates to the Truman Show? Well, because now the football has been handed off and now it's the Bitten Show. That there are five and eight stars for a total of 13. Now... What is up with the five and the eight? Well, we had been covering this for a long time. That we found this pattern of the number 58, five and eight. Now, the obvious is that five and eight is 13. And that's bad enough on its face that there are 13 stars on the seal. But this goes even deeper because Trump won the 58th presidential election. Also, there was a quantum leap episode in which Trump appears as a 12-year-old boy. And he's in a taxi cab with his father. And the date of that Quantum Leap episode, it was a historical episode, was 1958. And it was also on Trump's mother's birthday. Now, I believe that episode released in the 1990s, but it opens with the date of 1958. Now, there's also the Western... Um, called Track Down, and it's a 1958 Western in which a man named Trump appears and builds a wall, and he's a snake oil salesman. We also have Trump Tower has 58 stories in it. Even though it's numbered to number 66, which is his penthouse, it actually has 58 stories. There's also 58 bedrooms in the Mar-a-Lago mansion. And in 1958, Biff from Back to the Future, won his millions by using the Almanac. That was 1958. How old was he? He was 21. So we have this weird 1221 matrix. That's Apollo, you guys. 1221, the winter solstice, the birthday of Apollo. 12 years old, Trump was in 58. Biff was 21 years old in 58. Do you see the mirror? So... I wanted to open the show with that and also go into these chakras because we discovered that this symbol is the Antar Karana symbol, which is used in Reiki, Hindu, and Buddhism. Now, here's where things get creepy because this is Khazar Antar. See, the mirror here, Antar Karana, and Khazar Antar. What is Khazar Antar? It is the place where the fallen angels came down at the summit of Mount Hermon. Here it is right here. It's actually the highest temple in the world. In terms of elevation. And it's at the summit of Mount Hermon. And they actually found the oath that the fallen angels 
spoke from the book of Enoch. According to the command of the greatest holy God, those who take an oath proceed from here. What do you know? Kazer Antar, Antar Karana. Now, many of you also notice that um, Antar Karana sounds like anti C O R O N A. Now, since we're talking about crowns and chakras, it's interesting to note that something else might be going on here with this logo. Now, if you're in the dark of what we're talking about, you definitely have to watch yesterday's show. There's actually people saying that opening the chakras is good. Dozens of dozens of people in the comments section, and I'm going to clarify that today. People are saying that the logo is to open chakras, and that is a good thing. And they actually have Trump's back on this. So, if that's your reasoning then aren't you really saying that the VC that will that he's that this logo represents is going to open your chakras? Y you can't say both in the same sentence without them being mutually exclusive to one another. So in effect, those people arguing that this is good, you then are then supporting the VC. And why the secrecy and the concealment in the logo only to be decrypted now on this channel if this is supposed to be so good now what is up with chakras well those of you that have gone down that path and come back from it know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nowhere in this eastern philosophy do they mention jesus name Nowhere in Eastern philosophy do they mention Jesus' name in their spiritual growth, in the healing, in raising these chakras, in kundalini. None of it mentions Christ or the gospel or the good news or the story. There is one but one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. It's written, and we're supposed to pray even in Jesus' name. So, to exclude Jesus from this whole Eastern philosophy and spiritual meditation and ascension is in of itself Antichrist. And that's about as plainly as I can put this. Now, there are myths and rumors, people saying that Jesus went to the Far East and learned all this. Well, if he learned it, wouldn't he have, like, wouldn't that have been part of his gospel? Wouldn't he have like told people about chakras and hey, you got to raise up your spirit through the Kundalini and all this? He would have said that and he said no such thing. His ministry was based on faith. His ministry was based on the Holy Spirit. His ministry was based on him being the source of all healing and love and compassion and goodness to follow his example. So if you're a Christian and you're struggling with this, you're on shaky ground. You've got some work to do. you got to go back to the Bible and really read what it's saying. Now, people are saying that Trump didn't know. That someone else made the logo. That's hogwash. To think that Trump didn't see this seal. This is Trump's signature operation. This is his claim to fame. This is the one thing that he's getting behind and saying he's very proud of how quickly they brought these VCs to market. You think he didn't see this logo? You guys, I worked in marketing for two decades of my career. I have a degree in graphic communication from a bachelor science college. The first thing that, we, that you do when you have a concept or an operation or a program or some special thing you're working on is to create a logo. That's the first thing you do. And the logo appears on everything. It appears on every letterhead that passes his desk. It appears at every meeting. Oftentimes I'll make a giant logo, stick it in the background on a, on a board. Look, 
I could probably go right now and look up Operation Warp Speed meeting with the president and whatever advisors he brought in for this and look in the room and there's probably this logo sitting in the background. But I, but what this really is on its face is the Health and Human Resources logo. Here it is right here and you can see it clearly is behind here. And I, so that's what this is, the Health and Human uh, Resources logo, which is behind this. Okay, so what else do we have here? A couple more things. So, uh, was that these seals and logos carry symbolic meaning. They're on every letterhead. They appear on giant boards, on an easel, in the back of the room, or on the wall. And oftentimes, on all the projects that I've worked on over the decades, We've discussed the logo. In fact, that was the first thing we did. The logo would be up on the board and they would say, this is what our company represents. And we would break down every aspect of the logo. And we would discuss it in detail before even starting the project. So to think that Trump never saw the logo or had nothing to do with its design is just hogwash. Now, some other people were talking about the VCs will um, basically close the chakras and they were concerned about that. And I here, look, the VCs will not close chakras. If anything, they're going to open them up and open you up to demonic influence through this seal, through this operation. Look, Jesus says we have a lamp in our bodies. He said the eye is the lamp of the body. He was probably talking about your pineal gland as an empty vessel. Lamps are empty, you guys. They have to be filled with oil and lit up. It's just an empty vessel until it's either filled with the Holy Spirit and Christ or until it's filled with darkness. And that's exactly what Jesus said. You can't get there on your own. You can't get there by going around Jesus. Because you're either filled with his Holy Spirit and the light, or you're filled with the darkness. And that's exactly what he said. And both cannot occupy the same space. And because chakras in that whole Eastern philosophy never, ever, 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 ever mentions Jesus, and they exclude him completely, almost intentionally, then by definition, it has to be of the darkness. By definition. So, that's what's going on with that. Now, people also were putting God on judgment in the comments and Jesus on judgment. And they're saying, oh, only Jesus and God get to do miracles. And it's not called witchcraft and sorcery, but when other people do it, it's called witchcraft and sorcery. And when they heal people, it's witchcraft and sorcery. Listen, do you really want to put God on judgment? That is the very definition of the devil. He's the accuser. You're, you're playing ball with the devil when you do that. That's exactly what the devil wants to do. He's always challenging God and saying, if you get to do it, why don't I get to do it? The reason why the, the devil doesn't get to do it is because the devil's entire goal is to be above the most high and run the world he wants to run. And guess what? He's running it now. And look what's happening in the world that, that Satan is running. Chaos, unfairness, suffering, torture, all being run by the devil and this is what's happening right now. The Bible says that he's the ruler of this world. Is this the world you want? So those are my final thoughts on this logo. There's probably more. But I think that that pretty much wraps it up. By the way, warp backwards is P-R-A-W. And prawns are shrimp blue-blooded creatures on to other subjects i was doing some digging into the world's fair and one of you sent me some information on this saying casey you need to look into the world's fair of 1939 so i decided to look into the world's fair of 1939 
that was represented by 33 countries. And this took place in C-O-R-O-N-A, New York, right next to Queens. Now, this is weird. Flushing Meadows, Corona Park. And there were some weird foreshadowings going on. Because this was dubbed the World of Tomorrow. And this was supposed to be the City of Tomorrow right here. As you can see here. And when you entered this giant orb. You would see the World of Tomorrow. Here it is. In the bottom here. And this orb, this actually existed in 1939 in C-O-R-O-N-A, Park, Flushing Meadows, right next to Queens. And they had this giant trilon, is what they called it, which looked like a giant obelisk. And they had this huge sphere. And you can go inside the sphere, just like you can see here. And you like spiraled in around this sphere. Now, there was a lot going on at this World's Fair, but I tried to narrow it down to some specifics. And I'll keep digging into this because th this was the creepiest World's Fair I think I've ever seen. But here's the creepiest thing. This is the only reference on the entire internet that shows that Trump's family had a billboard commissioned. Here it is right here. This billboard was commissioned. Let's open this up here. And basically was the Trump real estate fortune. It says, The home of tomorrow. Um, Trump homes. Uh, 6,000 people live in Trump homes and as you can see it also has the obelisk and sphere it was fashioned after the world's fair it actually appeared in the world's fair as a billboard here it is and i'll link this in the pinned comment so you can dig into this but let's read this quickly before we begin to end the show here a builder named Trump. Now, this is from the Queen's Chronicle. So, this should be in the archives as well. This is real. This is dated June 2nd. This is the only instance of Trump's family's billboard on the entire internet. I looked on all different search engines. I could not find any additional information on this. Here's a better zoom in of it. The home of tomorrow. Now, Superman also appears... In this fair, he appeared, a man was dressed up as Superman. And he was running around in his super suit. Let's we'll see if we can find actual pictures of this guy. Look at this. Now these world fairs really reveal a lot. Here's a, a, a view of Flushing Meadows, C-R-O-N-A. This is it right here. You can get a better image of it. What a trip. Let's zoom in on this. Here's the uh, World's Fair. One of the programs. Here's a lady standing next to. I like looking at these old vintage photos. And some of this old footage. Because you can actually. Find things in here. Very crazy stuff. And let's go up here. Let's find Superman. There he is. Here's an image of this super guy in this suit. That's a color image. And there's some in black and white that are more close up. Here he is. So, what is this all about? Well, what have we been talking about? The S coming out of the chest being the portal. The snake coming out of the chest. And, of course, Trump's... Uh, coat of arms as the spear coming out of the square at the top and we know that in the Stargate series you had the ghoul, the serpent coming out of the chest 
in Alien. We have the serpent coming out of the chest. And it goes on and on and on. Donnie Darko, the serpent coming out of the chest. Here's another image of this Superman guy running around at the World's Fair of 1939. So everything is coming full circle, it seems. Now, of course, this was before Trump was born. But I have I am of the strong suspicion that spiritually things keep coming back around. Do they not? It appears. Here's another image of this guy. Now, remember we talked about Superman going into the phone booth. This is where he would transform. And then he was a time traveler. Remember, he would travel through time by spinning the earth in the opposite direction. Remember all that? And that we related that back to copper. And that these phone booths, really what this was about, these phone booths, was copper because telephone wire is pure copper. And the booths are full of copper coins because all coins have a copper core to them, do they not? And Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, they go into a phone booth to travel through time. And in the Matrix, they have to call in a phone booth to go to switch into the different dimensions. And Doctor Who, he goes into a phone booth to travel to different worlds and through times. The copper is the portal. The Nakash, the serpent, coming out of the chest. So, there's something here. That's the serpent coming out of the chest, you guys. So, what else is going on here? Well, I told you I was going to read this article. Where did it go? We'll finish up the show with this art. Here it is. Frederick... Christ Trump. Wow. Born in Woodhaven in 1905 to German immigrants Friedrich Trump and Elizabeth Christ, who married in 1902. Trump had become a naturalized citizen in 1892 and Americanized his name to Trump. He had a background in restaurants and hotels, but his son Fred decided to go into developing and building affordable housing during the Depression. This was Trump's father. Fred, he operated out of his home at Devonshire Road in Jamaica Estates, building his first home in at 170th Street of Hillside Avenue in 1930. Trump gave a higher value house for a lower price, paid his workers well, above average, but strenuously resisted unionization because restrictions on output and other uh, regulations, sorry, would have reduced operational efficiency. He learned a lesson from Westchester County, which has was highly unionized, raising the prices of a house by 30% over that of the exact same one in Queens. First, you need a good product. Then you have to tell the world about it. How to do this best? Question mark. Trump said, smartly designed, well-located signs are the answer. And it's a job for a specialist. Trump chose Cameo Sign Service of 110 Waterbury Street off 10X Street in Brooklyn for the job. The Trump Homes billboard at the 1939 New York World's Fair was one of Cameo's masterpieces, tying into the expo's theme and appealing to buyers in the mass home market. Trump had married Scotswoman Mary McLeod in 1939 I remember all the time travel references to Mary McLeod that we did in the documentaries featuring Trump's life Mary McLeod Mary Claire McLeod is Claire from Outlander and she was born on the Isle of Lewis where there is the standing stones of Kalanish which are the same standing stones that Claire Fraser I think her actual name is Fraser, Mary Fraser McLeod. I can't remember. But there is either Claire or Fraser that fits into Mary McLeod's name, Trump's mother. And she was born just 14 miles from these standing stones of Kalanish, which are featured as the stones through which Claire Fraser travels through time. The woman who plays Claire Frazier was born with 88 days left in the year on October 4th. 
This sign is proof that the one named Donald inherited his showmanship genius from his late father who died in 1999. And so there you go with this. Now, it all comes back full circle. Because this is the copper time machine. And this was the big discovery that we made yesterday when we were breaking this down. Somehow, this Operation Warp Speed is a portal. And this Antakarana symbol is both male and female. It's the same symbol. And this may be the portal that he was meant to fulfill in his destiny the copper. Unbelievable. So all of our work came full circle. And I'm really hoping that people wake up to this. If you're trying to look at chakras as a good thing. You're mistaken. This is the Jed. And it represented the spinal column of the ox. This was in the nativity scene, you guys. This was in the nativity scene. We just decoded this a couple weeks ago. This is the Jed. It represents the spinal column, the sacrum of the ox. This all goes back. This All this chakras and raising the kundalini all goes back to ancient Egypt. These were the people, the ancient pharaohs were the ones that enslaved God's people. They were against God. And they came up with this cult called the Jed cult. And they raised the Jed. The Jedi, they raised the Jed. It was a ceremony. That's like raising the kundalini. Look at this. This is it right here. Here's your roots of the chakra. Going back to ancient Egypt. They raised the Jed pillar. Okay. It's called the raising of the Jed. I'm repeating that because it links right into raising the Kundalini. Let me find the raising of the Jed. Now, there's more to this. Raising the Jed. Here it is right here. Part of the celebrations. Remember, these people opposed God. They don't mention him. This is all about the serpent. They don't worship. They didn't worship God. This is why there's this huge deception afoot trying to make the Old Testament God out to be the bad guy. Because then it all gets muddied and you don't know right up from down. And then the, they can rewrite history and make the Egyptians the heroes, make the Egyptians the ones that copied or that were copied by the Christians. You see how devastating this is because it's not true. The Most High is the Most High. He has and always was since the beginning. And so these people raising the jet, here is the deception, Osiris and all this worship of Osiris. This was part of this ceremony. And the jet was the sacrum of the bull's spine. This is where kundalini and chakras come from. And the ankh is the thoracic vertebrae of the bull's spine. And they worship this. The ankh is the thoracic vertebrae. See, this is the thoracic vertebrae right here. Notice how it... Uh, let's see, where does it go? The ankh looks like the Jurassic vertebrae. Okay? So this is what's going on. And that's why I need to end the show on this, because this is the great deception. Okay? If, if you're trying to get here without never even mentioning Jesus' name, or giving him the credit as the great healer, or going around him for your spiritual growth, or meditation, and all these things without Christ in the very center of it, then you are being deceived. Maybe this was the message, the most important message that I'm supposed to give to the people that come to this channel. I love each and every one of you. Much love. Be saved, you guys. Be saved today. Take care.